الرحمن الرحيم اشهد ان لا اله الا الله سليم وعلى اله وصحبه قال لي و لمرسلين كلهم اجمعين to the Almighty Allah, the only one that is worthy of worship. He is the only one that one is not comparable with. This Allah is the one recognized as Allah Kosamawati wal Ardo, the one that is responsible for the creation of the heavens and the world. He is the one, Allah Kosamawati Insan, who created mankind and every other creature that we have on the surface of the earth. Allah says, you say, be Allah who mafi samawati wa la arji, wa huwa la asis la akim. He says, everything in the world subjugates, surrenders, submits to him. Wa huwa la asis la akim. And this is the mighty, the wise. In another area, he says, you say, be Allah who mafi samawati wa la arji, kauhan wa karihan. In other era, it says, everything in the world surrenders, subjugates to him, whether they like it or not. It's not a matter of option. It's a matter of compulsion that everything in the world submits, subjugates, surrenders. We do not have any other option. We do not have any other creation that we may submit to. For instance, it is with the commandment of Allah that will command the sun to rise. To set. All is there. For us. If we continue to say, let us count all these blessings, we shall not be able to exhaust the list. For instance, He has given us eyes, and it makes it purpose possible for us to see with our eyes. Many have their own eyes, but they cannot see with their eyes. He has given us ears. It makes it possible for us to be able to hear with our own ears. Many have their ears there, but they cannot hear. He has given us our mouth with which we are able to talk. And people are able to understand what we are saying. Many people have the mouth as we have it, but it's not useful to them. He has given us our hands, our legs, and every part of the body that He has given us. And He makes all these parts useful to us. For all these, we are thankful to Allah. If you continue to count all these blessings, in Tahus in Allah, that you I will not be able to exhaust the county. So, but we want to call on Allah, we want to Please and beg him that as we are able to acknowledge, take all these blessings that he has, been, he has given us, he will continue to do more for us. I also, call on Allah to shower his blessings on the Holy Prophet Muhammad, وسلم, his companions, his household, all those who follow his footpath, including us, in the day of rectioning. In the day of resurrection. Having done this, I want to extend their my greetings to the chief missioner Nosfat, the executive body Nosfat, distinguished Nosfat personalities, brothers and sisters, and the distinguished audience. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. The topic of so this lecture given to me is concept of worship in Islam. And I have the lecture outline as one introduction, followed by purpose of creation. Three, the requisites for worship in Islam. What are known as acts of worship in Islam. Classification of worship in Islam. 
significance of worship in Islam and of course conclusion. So this shall be our areas of a uh, focus of concentration for the, this afternoon. Starting with introduction, worship is an act of religious devotion, usually directed towards a deity that is one that is recognized to be more powerful than the one that is carrying out the worship. Worship is not about an emotion. It is more about the recognition of God. And in Islam, it is an act of worship that is performed individually or in group, either informally or formally, and of course, under the um, designated leader permitted to do so. So worship is a religious duty that we carry out. It is not an emotional thing. It is an instruction that we have got to worship Allah. And this instruction or directive is what we are trying to observe. The concept of worship encompasses every aspect of human life and is central to the goal of freeing the individual as well as society from the worship of created objects, to the worship of the creator of all objects. What we are saying here is that in Islam, worship encompasses everything that a Muslim does. Right from the time a Muslim wakes up in the morning until you go to bed at night. For instance, we are taught in Islam that when you wake up, the first thing you must Say is what Alhamdulillah ladi hayani baada ma amatani wa ilai mushul. Oh, I give thanks to Allah, the one who has taken my soul and who has now returned it. This is because as we sleep, many other people also slept in that way. Some of them did not come back to life, and so the first duty that is a statement of a Muslim under the concept of worship when you wake up is what. Thank Allah who has taken the soul and who has returned it. And the next thing we do here is what? Approaching the toilet. Even Islam says, even when you are entering, you don't have to, it, it, has, it has taught us, taught us how to the toilet. In what way? Entering with your left leg and saying, I owe the big alimat to lie, that much. Shari Mahalak and some others. So Islam has not even left that aspect as minute as it is unattended to. And when you perform ablution, you come back, you say your prayers, you now want to eat. Islam says, Kulu Pashirabu, Alalan Toyiban, Menulosakinakum. It's from what is lawful that we have provided for you. Do not take anything that is unlawful, which means. If you prepare rice, amala, and some other things that are lawful like that is under the concept of worship, act of eating, act of drinking. And even when you are doing that, it says, la to sirifu, do not do it in excess, do not be wasteful. Now you have eaten, you want to go out, you want to dress up. The Islam teaches that when you are putting on your dress, first of all, put the right arm, then the second leg. You want to put on your trousers, put the right leg, and then the second one. You want to put on your shoes, the right and the leg. All these come under the concept of worship. In summary, I'm trying to say that everything that a Muslim does, right from the time he wakes up till he gets back, he goes to bed, is under the concept of worship in Islam. That is even at the individual level. You have not just want to go out. Islam says as you are going out, set out. And lead, maybe just little do house application. You don't have to go out with your back. Some have the view that, oh, by the time they are leaving their house, they have to go with the back, with the concept of belief that because they are seeing the house, they are facing the house, they will come back safely. That is the kind of taboo that is not accepted in Islam. So as part of the concept of worship in Islam, when you are going out, go out, face the entrance, and just supplicate to Allah that as you are going, let me go out safely and let me come back safely. So I'm trying to say, in essence, that everything a Muslim does 
right from the time he wakes up till he goes to bed, is under the concept of worship in Islam. Now, let's go to what is the purpose of creation. The primary purpose of creation for man is for to worship Allah. And we have this in the Quranic ayah that says, We have not created the man, the men and the jinns, except that they should worship me. This is what Allah is saying. Allah says, You said, O Allah, who is a man, who is a Everything in the world and heaven subjugates, surrenders, submits to the laws, to the rules and regulations of Allah, whether we like it or not. As a result, the concept of worship here in Islam surpasses or goes beyond when we say we go to the mosque, or when we say we are passing the month of Ramadan, or we are performing Hajj, or we are doing this or that. Everything that a Muslim does falls under the concept of worship in Islam. Islam as a religion enjoys peaceful coexistence among different creatures. It teaches, man, it teaches mankind to be in peace with the creator and with other human beings in terms of living in peace with them and doing good to them as what well we want people to do good to the other way. So the essence of worship in Islam is to maintain peaceful coexistence in the world and to promote human welfareism. All the pillars of Islam are targeted towards this goal. When we say promoting peaceful coexistence and of course promoting human welfareism, all the pillars of Islam focus on this promotion of peaceful existence and of course the promotion of what we call welfareism of mankind. Worship in Islam includes rituals, social activities, and personal contributions to the welfare of one's fellow human beings. One should submit himself completely to Allah. I said, Kul inon solati, wa no suki, wa mohiyaya, wa mamati, lilai robila alamin. That is all our assistance, all our worship, all our supplications, our assistance, our debt, everything belongs to. Allah. In essence, this is summarizing that every act, every deed, every step, everything that a Muslim does is under the concept of worship. If that ayah says, Kul in salati, my salat, wanusuki, my supplications, my glorifications, my living, my sister, one my mouth, even my death. Everything belongs to what? To the Almighty Allah. I have summarizes is that everything that a Muslim does, everything that, every act that a Muslim carries out falls under the concept of worship in Islam. Natural acts, which we do in our daily life, which include, for instance, eating, like I said, sleeping, walking, and also attributes of good characters, such as truthfulness, honesty, hospitality, courage, humbleness, are all acts of worship in Islam. Alaikum, doctor. Um, please, we would appreciate it if you can um, use your video or probably share your slide because of our Facebook and YouTube viewers. So it's blank there. Oh, the slide is blank. Yes, if you can just activate your video so that we can see you or you share your slide. Anyone? Oh, okay, let me see. Perhaps. And you have been granted, permi granted permission to share your slide if you so. Yes, wish. I'm already doing that. Oh, thank you very much. Yeah, we can see it now. Yeah. We can see it coming up. Okay. Can we see it now? Yes, we can, sir. Go ahead, sir. Thank you very much. Oh, thanks, thanks for drawing my attention to me. I did not observe that. Uh, I did not uh, actually uh, link it with the uh, Zoom screen. Because when you now do my attention to it, thank you. 
Can I continue now? Yes, sir. You can go on, sir. Yeah. I was trying to say that everything that a Muslim does have anything at all. <laughs> Looking at that ayah that says, Kul inna salati wa nusuki wa mahyaya wa mamati lelai rabbil alameen. That is everything that we do is what under the concept of worship. It is not only when we have gone to the mosque, we say we want to perform salah. That's the point I was making. And I was also trying to say that everything, including our eating, sleeping, walking, and all the attributes of goodness that we perform come under the concept of worship. In essence, one should not be a Muslim in the mosque. One should not be a Muslim during the month of Ramadan. But when you now find yourself in the office, you become another thing. You should be a Muslim in the mosque. When you are now found in the office, either as a lecturer, an accountant, a lawyer, a medical doctor, whatever, you should also be in that your profession as a Muslim. There's no dichotomy or there's no difference or separation between secular life and spiritual life as far as Islam is concerned. The two are interwoven. And that is why it's not possible for somebody to say, well, I can only be a Muslim when I go to perform salat or in the month of Ramadan or during Hajj. So wherever we find ourselves, we have got to behave and act and remain as Muslim. That's the point I'm, I've been making. And then talking about all these issues of aspects of worship, the only person we have got to emulate is the only prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. And we have that reference in the Quran where Allah says, where Allah says, what I call the Mahasna of the Holy Ummatin, Rasulan, and Abdullah. That is, we have sent a prophet to every nation, to every group. And the commandment given this word, worship Allah, Abdullah. That is, worship Allah, observe Allah. Follow all these instructions and they do not, whatever it says we should not do, we have to run away from it. Now, with the question, what are those things that we need to have in mind before we can say that we want to carry out all the acts of worship in Islam? Some of us are not mindful of some of these points that we want to mention. Before you can say, oh, I'm a Muslim and I want to carry out worship to Allah. There are certain things that we have got to put in mind. These are referred to as the requisites for worship in Islam. And the first one is what? Taqwa lie. One who is going to carry out worship in Allah, the first thing that we have got to do is what? Submission to Allah. Allah, you know, you may know Allah. Those who believe in Allah. When Allah commands, he say, Aslam to. Full aslam, aslam to the Rabbil Alami, I submit to Allah. So, the first criteria, the first prerequisite for one to carry out worship in Islam is what? The fear of Allah. Because any act of worship that is carried out, which is, which is devoid of fear of Allah, is meaningless. To push us to get us into saying that we are worshiping Allah, we are following injunctions. So that when we say, Why are you doing this? We are doing this because of Allah, because Allah has commanded that we have to do it. The second is what? Knowledge of Islam. Knowledge of Islam. It's important that before you worship Allah, we need to understand what Allah is saying. We need to If you do not know me, uh, are you going to worship me? And this is why Allah or the promises that Allah is now more the the worship, the prayer of a uh, sorry, the sleep the sleep of a learned man is better than the worship of an ignorant person. So who is ignorant? Who does not know? Not knowing that 
that it is not just doing it anyway. You have to do it the way Allah prescribed and the way the Holy Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu has also taught us. So the Prophet has said, when a learned man is sleeping, his sleeping is better and more rewarding than the worship of an ignorant person who does not have the proper modus operandi and ways of finding out what. So knowledge of history is important. The third prerequisite is what cleanliness. It is the time that before we worship, there are what we call act of cleanliness. And in that of the Quran, it says, Ya you are ladina amono, Izakum to ila salat, and so on and so that when you are preparing for salat, what is it? Faxilu ujura.
acts of worship in Islam, many will have five of them. The first one is they believe in Allah. The primary or the first one is what believe in Allah. First one, that what we call the first pillar of Islam. And under this, we have all the Iman, all the articles of faith as we have there. This will form the primary, the primary what premise for anyone to carry out worship in Islam. This is because if you don't have belief in Allah, then who are you following? It is Allah that says, It is Allah that says you have to carry out salat, perform ads, pay zakat, do all this, do all that, and so on. If you do not have belief in Allah, then who are you following? Who is giving you that instruction? Sometimes you have people saying they are, they are observing the Ramadan fast, uh, they are going on Hajj, but they tell you, uh, I'm not a Muslim. Oh, then who are you doing it for? Whose instruction are you following? So the first uh, act of Ibadah is what believe in Allah, and no one is attempted here. No one is attempted because this one does not require anything. Just to say that, confess to Allah, acknowledge Him, accept Him as your Creator, and nothing more. And nothing more. The second one is what? The second one is uh, Salat. To observe the five daily prayers. This is another act. And here, the prophet was supposed to have said, by the moment we are as Salat. The only difference between a Muslim and a non-Muslim is what? Is Salat. How do we identify a Muslim from a non-Muslim? It is Salat. In another area, the prophet says, wa manda kama salata akama din, wa manda raka salata taraka din. Whoever opposes, whoever carries out salat, that person, these are the people that oppose the pillar of Islam. And whoever leaves it unobserved, these are the people that are destroying the pillar of Islam. So salat is the second one. The third one is zakat. And on this issue of zakat, I say, zakat is becoming the forgotten pillar of Islam. Maybe we'll have another time where we shall be looking at this. It's, from, it's becoming the forgotten pillar of Islam. But briefly, we have zakat in three major areas. What we call zakat al amal that is zakat of money. Zakat al am zakat of animals, and zakat al harid zakat, zakat of uh, farm produce, farm produce, and so on. We have certain conditions that must be observed before we'll be able to pay zakat. One is for Islam to be a Muslim. Like I said, if one now says, I'm, I'm giving zakat, I am not a Muslim, who are you following? This is why we are saying, Iman is the first one. One is too valid, majority. The third one is freedom, to be free from slavery, imprisonment, or detention. The next one is what we call one year possession. And when we talk of this one year possession, we have two classifications there. If you are using what we call the lunar months, 12 months, that will give about 254 days. You give out 2.5% on Zakat al Mal, Zakat of money. But if you are using the global, the global calendar, that will give you 365 days, and you are going to give out 2.577%. We have the Nizab, the minimum amount that the wealth of property must attain before you can give us Zakat. We have sanity. Want to give us Zakat must be seen, somebody that is of sound mind. And of course, we have to have full possession of the wealth. I said, it has to be pointed out that zakat is becoming the forgotten pillar of Islam, and there is need to revive it. People lack adequate knowledge of its concept and understanding, and perhaps this will be addressed another time. There is need for all Muslims to be abreast of the development in the calculation of zakat, to reorientate them, and of course, to clear some misunderstandings. So the aspect of zakat, people seem to be uh, forgetting about it. It is as if that uh, pillar of Islam is dying. With the assumption that, oh, we are not qualified, we are not, because to be able to make up the conditions. But I think another time we'll be able to now look at zakat in its entirety and see who are those that are qualified and those who are not. We were in a meeting on one occasion, about 300, Attend that. And I asked, how many of you are qualified to pay zakat? Nobody talked. And I also asked, do you know the conditions involved? Nobody again. And I said, oh, that's a problem. If you do not know the conditions, if you are not aware of the conditions, 
then how will you know whether you are now qualified to pay it or not? So this is an area that we have to look at at another time. Psalm, of course, fasting is another act of worship. I'm trying to look at the time. And then uh, Hajj is the last one. These are all what we call acts of ibadah, which have been taken as the five pillars of Islam. Now, let me go to what we call classifications of worship in Islam. Classifications, that is, which areas do we group or do we identify or break them into? Because when you talk of worship, 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 they have been broken down into three, into two, according to some scholars, but in my own case, I put them into five, so as to simplify and make each of them um, better understandable. The first is what we call ibadat, what we call ritual worship. All this will involve all the ritual acts carried out as dictated by Allah and corroborated by the Holy Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. So everything that comes under the ritual acts, I put that as one. And how do we understand this better? When we look at the ayah that says, Lakodi kana lakum fi rasulullahi uswatun azamatun. Yaman kana yarjullah wal yamal akhira wa zakara la kathira. That is just the ayah. The best example is in the Holy Prophet Muhammad. For us to so show how do we perform salat, how do we pay zakat, how do we pay, go on naj, how do we do this, everything there. So all this, I put it as under what we call ritual, ritual worship. So that's an aspect. The second one I refer to as what we call personal matters. These are matters dealing with individuals. These are matters dealing with ways and manners through which an individual is to live his or her life. This has to be in, in conjunction with the dictates of what am I saying? These are uh, act of worship matters that deal with individual. For instance, Allah has given us our body. But Allah says, Moja Ali no Jasadan la Yakul no Taama. The body I've given you cannot survive unless you drink or unless you eat. As a result, if you want to eat and dig, it says, Pulu, Alalantoi, Bamoros, Akimakum, eat from those things that are lawful. So if one now says or decides to take alcohol, such a person is not following the doctrine of Allah because Allah has said, do not take alcohol. Now, although Allah has given us our body, and he has also given, told us how to use the body. If that one says, oh, one not decides to take um, that's cigarettes, for instance, or some other things that are dangerous to the body, and one destroys all the body cells. By the time you destroy the body, you will not be able to replace the cells. But what you have done is that you have violated that aspect of ibadah that involves personal um, aspects, or where we have some ladies. I, I, I am the owner of my body. She now takes it to what we call a prostitution, adultery, and the likes. Now she contrasts gonorrhea and so on and so forth. So what we have under this is what we, we have personal matters. That is personal religious affairs. Things that are dealing with individuals. That is you on your own as an individual entity. Because of that. Then the third one I take as Muhammad. This is the one that refers to aspect of what we call business transaction, uh, political matters, social matters, relationships, and the likes. And in this area, when we look at what the story to ask you, well, ask you, you know, like mostly, man is in state of loss. Why? Because that state of disaster that allows you to have, you can see what we have in the world. Because of money, because of power, because of politics, people are ready to do anything. People commit murder, people commit abortion, people commit theft, People commit rituals, all sorts of things are done. Parents now make use of their children in rituals, children make use of their parents in rituals, and so many things are within like that. All sorts of atrocities are being perpetrated, perpetrated in the world. And Allah says, this state of uh, what we call disaster, those that can only be saved are what? Those who believe in Allah, those who do good work. Those who exercise patience and those who stand by Allah. And when I look at this, when I get it, I say, what is the essence of this world? What, of, what shall we gain when you gain the whole world and you lose everything? And that's why I say, Yamaliki Yamati Yaman. Yamaliki Yamati Yaman. La Yamfa Umalu, Wala Haba Una. La Yamfa Umalu, Wala Haba Una. Yamaliki Yamati Yaman. Yamaliki Yamati Yaman. 
la ya fa wu ku wa wa la si ya sa la ya fa wu ma lu wa la na sa ba the day of reckoning the day of judgment is a day that all that we are running after money will not be useful power will not be useful politics will not be useful everything will not be useful and when i get out say i know the temple of yola and an where is the temple of yola today with all his wealth i know sonia bashka with all his power with all his power i know buruji kashamu with all his what he has with all his politics all of them they are gone so this day that we are talking about is a day that all these what is that going to be useless so why then we have to commit a lot of atrocities because we want to get a position want to do politics want money want power this all that i'm saying interpersonal the other one is what we call it this would be this would relationship with people and one those who are muslims and those who are not muslims and this also go to nation to nations and countries to countries that is we have aspect of worship in islam that will relate or teach you that relate of behavior to other people whether they are people of the same religion or not and that is why muhammad says that you mean aha dukum i tell you that in a see i tell you that no you mean a see i tell you that you are that this you are not yet a believer until you love for your brother what you love for yourself and when muhammad was saying that that is not that is Receive that to be Muslim. Another of this is if you are able to eat, you have your supper. But the, about the, some people, so the latter left, they are, they are in hunger and they are not able to do anything, they are not yet a believer. So the point I'm making is that there's that aspect of worship that touches interpersonal relationships, how we have to relate to people, to be able to promote what we call peaceful coexistence and human welfare. And then the little matters that's the good one there's a sort of money that this is law briefly we have criminal what we call personal laws and then criminal laws laws like marriage class uh, business and so on that are lawful all these are within our own uh, limits what the individual can do but when you go to criminal matters this cannot be determined by individual or group it has to be a competent judge called and i say look at the case of the learning Came from some uh, Arabic students that were sent to Ida. They went to Ida hotel or did something, and they now came back and they began to wire them and look at the result. I said they took us into their hands. If they understand the concept of what they do, they understand that they don't have that right to now meet out punishment on criminal because what they have done is under criminal law. Even in the Islamic environment, it's under criminal. The limits are bounds, and that's why I say religious cases like. Adultery, theft, murder, highway robbery, kidnapping, raping, prostitution, and so on. But involving all this cannot be determined by either individual or a group of people. It has to be under the um, under the um, what we call judgment of a competent judge. So this uh, I think I what to call legal aspect of worship in Islam. Now significance. So look at the significance of what. In Islam, what is what recognition of Allah the most forbidden for all those who are set and who carry out worship? We have acknowledged and we have recognized Allah our creator, and that is the primary thing. So, if one is saying you are doing good, you are doing this, but you don't carry out any act of worship, because of no use in the story of comparative religions, we have some other religions called religion, but they are not what to call religion because they don't have what to call concept of worship. What is it for instance? So that's the reason. What is it for push? The reason. And some others like that. They don't talk about the risk of life, how to manage the society, but we will not say anything like concept of worship in their teachings. As a result, they cannot be taking our religion. So Islam is talking about worship, and the answer is what to recognize Allah as the supreme being, the controller of the earth and heaven, and for us to obey him, because that's the primary purpose of creation. To submit to Allah and His laws. For us to submit to His laws, what He says we have to do, we do it. What He says don't do, we should not do it. All this come under the worship of Allah. If that's want to do good, this says, of course, when Allah says, oh, you have to do this, 
you cannot do this. You have to do what is good. You have to put good away from what is bad. So all this. It prefers one from perpetrating evils. Yes, we all say that any solar that is observed, or any act of worship that is observed. But when you are carrying out that worship, if we do not see any, if we cannot remove any evil thing or bad behavior from it, it's not good. That's taking up worship. I was talking to our MS students when they were about starting their journey, and I said, one of the qualities for you is what we call sincerity of purpose. Are you carrying out jihad because of Allah, or because you want money, or because you are looking for uh, sisters? I said, you have to start your conscience. If the jihad you are working on is for you because of Allah, fine. If you get money, I think you are going to get money. If you get sisters, that's very take for you will stop at. So, in this sense, we are trying to say that whatever we want to do, we will have to consider the purpose when we are doing it. And this is uh, what I like to say here that everything that we are doing is based on goodies. It portrays limitations of man. Yes, that is. The concept of worship in Islam shows that man has some limitations. There are things that are beyond us. And you will need the support of the Supreme Being to come to your aid. Supreme Being that is so much allowed to assist you. So, but one who will not who will feel that way. I'm on the top of everything. And we are day to day. They are not there. They are not there. It shows the creativeness nature of man. And again, it shows that all of us are created. And that one time we are going to live full enough to cycle the most. Every soul that is created is going to die. But it's only Allah. Holy shame, fan, fill a lot of Everything will vanish except Allah that will remain. Worship in Islam helps in fighting bad leaderships, tyranny, and oppression in the world. This is part of the game. Have bad leadership, people in power, or we have what we call tyranny, we have oppression. We are what that you might be able to do. You call on Allah to come to your aid, and Allah will come to the aid. Worship in Islam helps in promoting welfareism to mankind and service to humanity. Worship in Islam helps in promoting peace existence among the same nation and different nations of the world. One who carries out worship fulfills the purpose of creation. Allah says, I have not. To come to the world, our coming to the world is done at the It's a worship. So, if you are able to carry all these forms of worship for us, we are now able to do what to fulfill our own purpose of creation. And those who leave it undone, they are going to meet Allah. Sorry, sorry, sorry to interrupt, sir. We will appreciate if you can uh, round up like a few minutes. Okay. Okay. I have some questions that I would like to ask. Thank you, sir. Yeah. Uh, worship in Allah brings contentment to mankind. That is whatever you have, you are contented. Eh? So, uh, my conclusion I say, let us pursue reality and not pursue fake things in the world. Let's pursue reality and not pursue fake things in the world. The physical world is fake. Our existence in the world is fake. Money is fake. Houses and cars are fake. The material world is fake. Is fake. What am I saying? Everything that we are seeing in the world. This is what we run after. Analysis Alehaku Muntakazur, Atazu to Makobira. The side for wealth, the side for power, the side for position, the side for all this material world. We continue to search until we get to the grave. Meanwhile, all that we are searching for, they are fake. What am I saying? When I say they are fake, it's something that is going to be dead for a period. Temporary. It has temporaneness and at the time it will disappear. That's what I mean. But what is what is the genuine and original? We have all left on pursuit. And I said, reality and everlasting blessing can be pursued and realized through the worship of Allah. Again, everything we do in the world falls under worship in Islam. And I say, what is original and genuine? Or what is that? What is original is death. What is genuine is soul. What is genuine is life after death, going to the grave. What am I mean? What do I mean? Now, no, no one will now argue that, oh, no, uh, we are not going to die. Everybody now believes that we are, going to, we are going to die. And the difference between somebody dying and one living is that the soul will move out of the body. This soul, we don't see it. But it is real. It's invisible. When the soul disappears, nobody sees it. We only say that somebody has died. We show that that soul that is disappearing, even though it's invisible, it's real, it's genuine, it's authentic. Now, when somebody is now there, what next? 
you put that person into the grave. For those of us who are alive, we have not seen the grave, we have not been there. But we all know that when somebody is dead, he now goes into the grave, we bury him. That grave is really it's original. Because whether you like it or not, everybody is going to the grave. And life after death, and of course, punishment and so on. So, what with these words, we are pursuing all these fake material words, and we leave the original. And at that juncture, I say, Yabuna, Dunia, Yabuna, Dunia, Mahalan, Mahalan, Yabuna, Dunia, Yabuna, Dunia, Yabuna, Dunia, Mahalan, Mahalan, Yabuna, Dunia. I say, let's take it easy, take it easy, take it easy. This world is not worth pursuing. This world is not worth running after. This world is not worth uh, purchasing. Yabuna dunia, Yabuna dunia, Mohalan, Mohalan, Yabuna dunia, Shepele, Shepele, Aye yo to, Ashepele, Ashepele, Aye yo to, Ashepele, Ashepele, Aye yo phony, Ashepele, Ashepele, Aye yo phony, Grandad of Vika, Rabbi Zaja, Maya Sibona, or Salam Al Musalim, Alhamdulillah, Rabbi Alam. الله أكبر الله أكبر الله أكبر كبيرة جزاكم الله خير الجزاء. We say a very big thanks to our father who has given us the talk for today, Dr. Taufiq Salako. جزاكم الله خير الجزاء. May Almighty Allah reward you abundantly, sir. We have some questions. Uh, our chief missioner, we have the opportunity of um, saying a prayer for you. Uh, but for now, we'd like you to attend to the questions that we have. Um, I don't know how you'd like to take these questions. Do I read all the questions out, sir? Or you'd like to take them one after the other, sir? Let's, let's have all the questions, because some of them may be overlapping. Uh, all right, sir. Um, the first question is about ablution. That is ablution valid without throwing the stick. Um, that's the work before it. It's what? Is, what? Ablution? is it valid without throwing the siwak? The throwing stick. Okay, okay, okay. Okay. Then the second one, when the Imam recites Surat al Fatiha, he says Amin at the end of Surat al Fatiha. When are the mahmoom, those praying behind the imam, when are they supposed to say their own amin? Is it after the imam's amin or they say it together? The third question has to do with um, one who had performed ablution and had to cleanse a child that has defecated. Is that ablution still valid, sir? And um, the fourth one has to do with zakat. That can we pay zakat the salary henas? Can they pay zakat from their salary, like the dog zakat every month from their salary? Um, okay, every month. Yes, from their salary. That is it allowed? So I guess those are the questions we have now, sir. And um, the last one is a request that has come from quite a number of people. They are requesting that they get um, your presentation. If it be possible to get it, sir. Uh, I've already sent it to the. What's up? Is that with you? Is that with you? Your what's up? Okay, we 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 will try and we will try and assess that. Thank you very much, sir. I actually I actually pull it from there now. From there now, it's there. All right, sir. You can attend to the questions now, sir. Yeah, the first one is a uh, ablution. Is it valid without a uh, siwak, without brushing or so and so on? That's the question. Yes, sir. Yes, just not to, yeah, not to waste time. It's valid, it's valid. The, uh, the consensus of uh, opinions of scholars agree it's valid. But if you're able to have what we call a brushing, there's no harm. So, but even without a uh, brushing and so on, once you perform ablution, it's valid. That's it. Then, when Mamun, Say Amina. Is it after the Iman or before the Iman? You know where we are observing Salat is quiet, it's silent. So by the time the Iman finishes Surah to Fatiha, 
the mamu will not be able to know when he has finished. And that is why it's recommended that each follower will have to recite Surah to Fatiha on his or her own, if you are following the Imam. And when you end, just uh, end it to your amino. Irrespective of whether the Imam has uh, finished or not, because since it is silence. But now, in case of Subi, Asri, Maghrib, and Isha prayer, so once the Imam recites Fatiha, I think uh, in our own area here, you know, the practice that most of the Imams will not even uh, say amino aloud. For the mamun to follow or to probably hear some of them will say it quietly so but at least once the imam says wala do li na so we say amina allah alam the next one is a, a, a somebody who already performed ablution but now who has attended to a child that has defecated not so yes that has a uh, defecated if in the process of attending to that uh, child, if the hand has come in contact with urine or excreta, it's better to go and perform a, a, a new ablution. But you know, in these days, what we use are disposable clamping, pampas. If it's just a matter of taking a it away and put another one, you may not, it may not be necessary. But where you have contact with either urine or this, it's uh, better uh, you perform a new ablution. Allah Alam. The last one is a zakat. Can a salary earner pay zakat monthly? In this case, uh, it would not be easy to just answer yes or no in this regard because we have different uh, opinions. But let me align with the majority opinion. Majority opinion is that if you are going to pay zakat, the money, particularly if it's money, that's what you call a one year possession that that money must be within your possession. So if you say monthly salary now, the money that is coming monthly, I have to not be able to meet up with a, a, that a year, a year uh, possession. Then how do you now even determine what you call the museum? Monthly, this is going to be varied. So, but let me align with the majority is that salary earners who pay zakat. I repeat, salary earners who pay zakat, but it might not be monthly. For instance, I'm a salary earner and I do pay zakat. But what I do is that I pay it yearly, yearly. So there's a way by which we go about the calculation. Time may not be able to permit us now. So but that's a, that would be my response on that. Hello, Alan. Yes. Okay. Um, we have some people raising their hand. Yes. I don't know if this is for question. But if your please would appreciate it always, if you can always drop your question on the chat box or the question Q and A box. This is going to really, really save our time. But um, because we have um, like two, three minutes to spare, I'd like to take um, one person. Let me see the number that I can take. Let me see those that are raising their hand. Okay, Adib, Aziz Adebayo has been raising his hand for quite a while. Aziz Adebayo, please. Um, the host should please help or mute Aziz Adebayo to ask his question. Salam alaikum. We can it hear is, you. It is a mistake. Not raising hand. It is a mistake. Oh, okay, okay. The brother says it's a mistake. Okay. All right, all right. Thank you very much. What about Techno K7? Techno K7 and um, Sanusi Olajimoke. Can they unmute and ask their questions, or we just remove the uh, authority from them? Salamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. This is Sanusi. 
Assalamu alaikum. Wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Wa alaikum salam. We can hear you. Please go ahead with your question, ma'am. This question comes from one of my children because we we shared, um, okay, the, pre the presentation is what together. They ask the question that when Imam is leading Salat and the Jomo are the, the Jomo, they are female. And in case they are really polluted and need to go and perform another ablution, who should continue with the leading of the Salat? That is the question from the children. I hope you get me and right. All the other, yes, 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 we got you right, we got you right. Yes, sir. All the followers, all the followers are females. Yeah, now. Yeah, so if it happens like that, once the uh, imam moves away from where he is leading, one of them should just emerge there at the back, at the back, not coming to the neighbor. Uh, just a little step ahead, and then, um, and then she will continue. And then, that is it. Jazakumullah khairan. Alhamdulillah, alhamdulillah. Okay, uh, we say Jazakumullah khairan once again to Dr. Taufik Salako. Alhamdulillah. We we'll now go back to the. We we'll now go back to the chief missionary. Sorry, please pardon me. So give us the closing remarks and offer special supplication for our guest lecturer for the day. Chief Missioner, sir. Alhamdulillah. Alhamdulillah. Alhamdulillah, you the alameen. We thank you, Almighty Allah, for making this webinar possible. And we thank our speaker for that scholarly uh, presentation. We can't thank you, you know. Before I pray for him, uh, I want to do some talib. The card of salary, as the Pope said, is the right, according to Koridobi. And he argues that some of the Ulapa, some of the Kalibas, they, they did it in the past. Koridobi and other scholars are saying that if Allah has a poor Pama to give Saka, at every office, the Allah can never be unjust to ask you that who is for any of our million dollar monthly as a as a banker. You are a Mister Agena. Money is not up to one year hold with me. I cannot pay. Although we are both say that Allah can and who say that Allah can never be unjust. He said of asking the poor farmer to be given zakat at every office, and they are now saying they are zakat on professional charges. If you are an engineer and you charge forty million naira. And you after spending you after executing the contract, there have been about five million a day. And you are saying that because there's no it's not just one year in your hand, you are not the that that's the argument of some contemporary scholars who are saying that those who are earning salary must put a cut on uh, on it as they collect their uh, uh, salary. And they say that at the end of the day, if all the cumulation, the cumul cumulatively, there is not a money, it's not often resolved, and I will regard it as salary for them. But for them to escape Saka on the basis of it saying that, oh, she's not a common year with me, that would be very unfair to those who are first and give Saka at every affair. May Allah reward all of us about that being a fellow person. I will thank the Pope on behalf of the Dalibas of the National Life Party, on behalf of the Board of Trustees of the National Life Party, on behalf of the Executive Council, on behalf of all the members of the National Life Party, I say, Jezreel Commander of Hiram Sekira. There's nothing we can give to you. There's nothing we can do for you that will be greater than this words. Jazakumun lau khairan kathira. That is the best that we can give to you. And may Allah add what we have done today for skill of goodies. All those who have enjoyed this program to join me in reciting sort of the path there or pro. May Allah increase in knowledge. May Allah increase in taqwa. May Allah increase in iman. May Allah increase in all the Positions of life. I may mean, admit him into Paris at the time he uh, goes to meet his creator after a very ripe age, inshallah. Bismillah Rahman Rahim, Alhamdulillah Rabbi Alame, Araman Rahim, Maliki Omidin, Yakanabu, Yakan, 
اهدنا صراط المتقين صراط الذين انعمت عليهم غير المغضوب عليهم ولا ضالين امين 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 سبحان ربك رب العزه عما يصفون وسلام على المرسلين الحمد لله رب العالمين قم يا ابو بيتابع النصات ام تيلين بروف ناو that you are be added to the pool of natural liberty resource resource person pool you are added to our pool of resource person and inshallah we are be getting approach to you as and when you by the grace of allah because you cannot be far away from people like you the way you have delivered the lecture people have really understood you are really deep for me and you do get it to pieces we cannot expect anything less for me season lecturer like you jazakum allah khaira once again and to all our viewers those who have visited today's program may allah add it to the good deeds whatever you have left to come and attend to this program may allah take care of them better than you are taking care of them yourself to the moderator imam said that the only lecturer of mama borija regular lecturer of the college of primary education market and all those who have made to the members of the Obina committee and the entire members of the National Rally Party and the entire members of the Rally Party who are joining this program. May Allah reward all of us and what I say. Allah may tell you why. What I need to say. Okay, I want to come out with Allah. Why do you want to come out with Allah? They are regularly on the Quran. In the Quran, the Quran is not there. Allah may tell you why. وعمل والذي نتنا من الكتب والذي نتنا من الكتب وعينا نتنا من الكيان انك طالما اعطينا هذا العيون وما تكسر اللهم صلنا فوق الحرج وصلنا تحت الحرج وتي من اهل ليك اللهم اجعلنا من دهاك فاجرك واستغفرك فاغفرك واستغفرك فاغفرك واستغفرك فاغفرك واستغفرك فاغفرك واستغفرك فاغفرك واستغفرك فاغفرك واستغفرك يا عزيزي يا غفار يا رحمن الرحيم اللهم لا تجعلنا في مكمنا لا تنبغي لنا فرقا لا اما لنا فرقا لا قربان لنا فرقا لا دولا لنا ادريتا لا مريضا لنا صبيتا لا ميتا لنا رزقتا لا ميتا لنا الى ابيتا ولا تائبا لنا الى قبلتا ولا جائعا لنا الى الموتا ولا اخا لنا الى صريتا لا ولا دنيا لنا اصلتا ولا مجاهدا في سبيل كاي لنا صريتا ولا اجا من اوائل الدنيا ولا لنا قد دعوا لنا بالصلاه الى ان تنا لا قد هي رحمتك يا ارحم الراحمين يا انا ربك رب العزه يا ما يسكون وسلام على المرسلين والحمد لله رب العالمين صلوا على نبينا الكريم صلى الله عليه وسلم سلام شكرا جزيلا وما سلام جزاكم الله خيرا فوق سلام سلام شكرا جزيلا Assalamualaikum. Assalamualaikum. Memang ada kuliah tinggal dalam.